really, you know, for having a, he messed his back up pretty bad Saturday, came in Sunday, got treatment, really uh, could have been held from practice, but came out here practice extremely hard. As I've mentioned before, it'd be great to get him eligible um, so he could help us on special teams and offense as well. What happened with Xavier Grimble over the weekend? Yeah, Xavier, um, you know, had some chest and shoulder pains, um, so they took him in to check him out. Um, nothing severe. Um, we just had to limit his contact today. Hopefully, he'll be back later this week. Did, did you say um, McNeil is eligible, or we want to get like him? To, yeah, we won't know anything until the end of the semester. It's all based off of the semester's grades. Any of those guys who are banged up Saturday? Any, anything like long term or? No, uh, Mark uh, has a concussion. Um, he, he was uh, he was tested. He wasn't very close to passing it, so you never know with that how long that could be. Um, Dylan's a high ankle sprain. Uh, TJ um, actually kept practicing after knocking his tooth out, um, but then they had to go in and they had to go in and dig it out and um, put some stitches in. So he, so he wasn't able to practice today. McDonald. Yes. What, what happened to Drew McAllister? Drew's uh, hip, I believe. Special teams towards the special teams part of practice there in the return. Uh, spoken with Mark Keith, he looked like he was back out here doing some calisthenics and stuff. What's what's his situation and what did you have to Those are calisthenics. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try to go Cunitive. through two and a half hours of that. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, he, he made a mistake and he's a freshman and uh, we hope that he continues to you know grow and learn from his mistakes and so obviously we didn't let him just come right back in yet. He spent two and a half hours today um, doing a lot of things that I'm sure weren't very fun for him. And so and hopefully he'll mature. You know, he's, he's still in his first year of college. How do you, in your mind, sort of figure out what's the, you know, how many strikes are too many strikes for a kid versus let's stick with him and, you know, stay yeah. behind him? A lot of it has to do with what are the strikes. A lot of it has to do with is it affecting the rest of your team? Um, so you just have to, there's no exact rules for it, um, you know, because so many kids do make it, you know. The guy we just talked about was the MVP of the day, Curtis, was about as bad as we've ever had when he, we got here, um, as far as respect, as far as doing things right, accountability is why he ended up being eligible. Um, and he's night and day right now. He, I mean, he, he, he's, he mentioned to me today, he's going to talk to Mark, Mark Keith, you know, about how, how much better it is having a relief of doing things right as opposed to always being in the doghouse. So, um, you know, it's really neat when they change, you know, and it, it's hard sometimes to give up on them, you know, especially when you know the kids for a while and you know, um, you know what they're going back to. After watching the film Saturday, did anything jump out of you? Yeah, same thing. We got a really good receiver, a really good quarterback, a good left tackle, a good tight end, and a lot of holes to fill. Any of the three freshman tight end standing up in the trio? Um, well, Christian got reinstated back, you know, after missing Saturday. I mean, they're just really different. You know, Xavier can practice today. Xavier's the best blocker. Randall's in the middle, and Christian's the, the best deep threat. So it's a really exciting group to have. You know, it's one of the few positions where you where you look at, you know, to have four guys and three of them being their first year. Um, obviously, that's our goal to get get our whole roster like that. Can you evaluate the defense right now with guys out, especially the linebackers? I don't think you can evaluate the unit, you know, because so many guys out. Um, I think you can evaluate individuals um, that are practicing and that we're trying to improve and moving around on depth charts. And, but um, no, we won't know. We won't know how good we are for a long time, um, you know, because you know you're potentially missing all three starting linebackers, maybe, and you're going to have some freshmen in that front seven. I think we signed ten guys in the front seven. Some of those guys are going to have to play. I was looking through the numbers, uh, Matt in the fourth quarter of games last year, it was only like 45% completion percentage, you know, like 90-something pass efficiency. How would you evaluate his play in the fourth quarter of games last year? Yeah, I thought that, it's interesting you say that, because I thought that in the second quarter, there were end-of-game scenarios that he was better at in the fourth quarter. So um, we just got to get better as a whole. Obviously, something for him to improve on. That's the next level of being a, a good quarterback to a great quarterback is finishing games off. Um, and, and we've got to we've got to make better plays around him. You know, there's a number of plays. You know, you can go right to that Washington game, two plays of six inches. You know, Osbury and Jordan Cameron. You know, to end the game. So um, we just got to do a better job. Is there just more pressure at the end of the fourth quarter than at the end of the second quarter? Sure, there is. Yeah. That's that's it. 
that's not really news breaking. So but well, you're saying more pressure that it was enough. interesting that at the end of the second quarter he was better. But because it, because they're in the two minute drills, um, you know, usually there's not a big difference in a guy's performance in a two minute drill in the second quarter or fourth quarter. Um, you know, we're not calling any different plays. Um, you know, so he's just got to continue to mature. And like I was saying last night, somebody at the golf tournament, he's going in his third year. Well, none of those other guys were even playing yet. You know, um, after Carson, since Carson, so. I think it's going to be a big year for him. Last year, um, I remember when you put out the depth chart at the end of spring, you said it was written in sand, I guess, obviously meaning that it wasn't a permanent thing. Do you hope by the end of the spring to have a second quarterback in mind, or is this something that could carry into training camp and you might not figure it out until you know, kind of right before the season starts? Yeah, that's exactly. We hope to, but I don't know that we will. Um, we'd like to. I have no idea how long that's going to go. Somebody's got to really distance themselves. And for us to do that, it's a more complicated situation than normal because obviously two guys have not used a red shirt here. Um, so it'll be a lot that goes into that. And no one's distanced themselves at, at this point? I would all? say Jesse's in the lead. Yeah, I would say Jesse's um, played, played well. Um, his numbers have been good. You know, and, and he's getting a better command of the offense. He'd been one, Jesse's probably been, you know, one of the most improved guys through camp.